And then lastly, invest in the future. And this is having a, a, a solid idea generation mechanism of capturing new ideas as they come, hopefully from almost anyone in the, in the, uh, in the organization. Um, having a, a, a sound connection point between these new ideas and ultimately the whole budgeting process, prioritization process, and of course, ultimately the, the project and portfolio management processes. Uh, and then lastly, innovation itself, which we, we uh, highlight in principle four, making sure that you have uh, some, some mechanism in place, perhaps a portion of your team, maybe even some dedicated resources in the more advanced stages who are focusing explicitly on new things to innovate around. So here are, of the 33 breaking it down to roughly half of those, some things and some waves of things you might focus on in order to continue to build towards better performance. So um, lastly, on this first topic, I wanted to talk about, relative to the five, I mentioned before that real value comes from the fourth principle, the relationship with the rest of the organization. So all of those other principles really ought to be focusing on the business implications of, of those topics. And, and so from a people, per, people perspective, uh, that's, you know, having business savvy IT staff, uh, having stronger business analysis, business relationship management. We, we see a variety of organizations that have institutionalized what we refer to, what they refer to as BIOs, business information officers, sort of liaisons and translators, if you will, and ultimately advocates, in bi-directional advocates, between IT and the business units or divisions. Very effective ways to to uh, make sure that the people component is very business savvy. Again, that's a, that those are ultimately your your front door to the rest of the organization. Uh, secondly, from an infrastructure perspective, the real key here is making sure that you're explaining infrastructure in a way that is that the rest of the organization can understand. This is often the black box of the company. Gosh, I really don't understand the cloud. What is that? You know, the, the, all the uh, ones and zeros and networks and I mean the cables. I, what, what is all this stuff? The rest of the organization has a hard time of translating what all this means and why you need to refresh these and why they have to be maintained and why you have to migrate from from one situation to another. Explaining these in terms that the rest of the organization can understand is very important. From a governance perspective, it means engaging the rest of the organization in that governance. The prioritization activities ought to engage with multiple parts of the, the, the business community, if you will, uh, and making sure that they stay engaged throughout. And, and hopefully even, again, a topic that I'll return to in a couple of pages, but engaging multiple parts of the, the organization for that prioritization process so they have a better appreciation for the ideas that are emerging and ultimately the demands that are put on your department uh, for various activities. And then lastly, from an external um, partnership perspective, to a greater extent, uh, share IT and business strategy with your external partners. I'm always, there are a, a number of organizations, uh, one here in the Twin Cities, ATK, for instance, uh, the CIO there, Jeff Kubaki, um, and, and other companies around the, the, the country are beginning to have what they refer to as vendor days, which I think is such a great practice. Global partners uh, on the East Coast, an energy company in the Boston area. And what they do is they bring together um, their vendors, and oftentimes the CEO and the CIO will explain their, their uh, uh, respective strategies to the external partners. The idea being, this is what is key for us. This is how we are defining success. This is what the future looks like from our perspective. When you come to us with ideas, do so with our needs in mind, not your needs in mind. And I, don't, I don't actually don't, don't mean that cynically towards external partners. Without that kind of a guidepost, to some extent what they will be bringing to you is what benefits them as well as you. This, this really, I think, puts the onus on them to understand these are the, way, the where we will be successful, help us be successful. I think a really important concept as well. So moving into the second area then, is that the second of the five to, to keep in count at home there? Uh, find a partner in another part of the organization and cross-pollinate. Again, I think a really important part, especially for those of you who work within IT departments that are the more traditional support organizations that haven't yet broken through to be considered as potential innovators potential sources of greater value for your organizations. Find other parts of the organization who can, in fact, work with you to develop really interesting ideas. B2C companies, oftentimes it's the marketing department. B2B companies, it's often supply chain. But I don't mean to say that those are the only two options, and certainly you can even reverse those, frankly, uh, for B2Bs and B2Cs. It may be somebody else, but find a, an executive who is, again, curious of IT, understanding of the potential power of IT, and engage them and use that as kind of the pilot to potentially expand this into other parts of the organization as well. You know, historically, there's so many great uh, innovations that happen at the nexus of two different disciplines. Uh, behavioral economics was the merger between economics and psychology. Uh, bioinformatics, the merger between biology and digital technology. And, uh, you know, Apple is mentioned so often as kind of the nexus between technology and design. 
So technology alone is not going to get you to the ultimate value, to the really kind of aha value, the true innovation on behalf of the organization. It's finding the business needs articulated by a clever, again, hopefully IT savvy executive somewhere else, and working together on the implications of how you develop something fundamentally new for the company, hopefully ultimately fundamentally new for your industry. So I think a really important part of that as well. I wanted to highlight Red Robin. Perhaps some of you know this, this uh, excuse me, this uh, uh, restaurant chain. Um, they have a CIO called Chris Laping, and he's done some really interesting things. Uh, uh, focused on ideas that will be familiar to a lot of you, but um, about 10 years ago, a little bit more, they developed what they refer to as the e-club, and it was essentially a loyalty club of sorts. It's very difficult in the, in the sit-down restaurant space to develop a compelling offering relative to loyalty because all they're finding out about you is your credit card. And if you, if you visit multiple restaurants, maybe they'll know a little bit more about your migration patterns of one sort or another. But unlike an airline or a hotel where they have a, they understand where your home base is, where you're going frequently, how often you're going to different places, there's so much information that the traditional loyalty programs, the industries that, that where they were born, how they can extract so much more value. For restaurants, it's more, more difficult. Um, E-Club was primarily driven from marketing 10 years ago. Uh, and it took uh, 10 years to get to 2.2 million members, actually not bad at all. But it wasn't very dynamic. It was just collecting some basic information that, that, that if they could on their customers. And for instance, offering a free burger uh, if you happen to, to come into the restaurant around the time of your birthday. They decided, uh, Chris Leaping, the CIO and the CMO of the organization, elected to partner to create what they refer to as uh, the Red Royalty Program, which has the tagline, as you can see, Edom and Reap um, uh, associated with that. Um, fortunate or unfortunate, uh, I'll let you be the judge. Um, but basically, this was really kind of transforming this to, to, uh, to a much higher level of value ultimately. They developed uh, a greater collaboration between IT and marketing, as I said. Um, they, they offered insights about how often customers visit Red Robins, uh, how that's growing or declining, what delights which customers most, giving them the option of telling them what, what, how, how do you want to interact with us, what, 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 what pleases you ultimately and working an element of surprise then into the customer experience, offering unexpectedly something for free or some sort of added benefit aligned with those areas that the customer has identified as a most important. And what's interesting is a registered Red Royalty, they've just uh, introduced this to about a quarter of the restaurants, and a registered Red Royalty guest um, has a profit potential three times higher than normal guests as a result of the insights they need from that. And again, I think it's, a, it's an interesting idea emerging from the nexus of IT and another part of the organization to develop true business value. So as I say here, um, revenues and the stock have, have climbed substantially uh, since the introduction of this. And actually, interesting enough, Leaping, Leaping is one of these uh, CIO pluses as he was also given SVP of business transformation, again, kind of an innovation role, if you will, for the entire organization. So he was rewarded in the process. So um, an, an example of the nexus of those. The third area then, as I mentioned, is developing kind of this R&D mentality within the IT department. And so it means tracking what are the kind of ascending trends within IT and thinking more about how they translate back into your business. I, I list the, the four that have come up most prominently uh, in the research that my company has done. Um, and these are, again, topics I'm sure that are familiar, in fact, probably leveraged by many of you. Um, it is social and mobile networks. They are in order, by the way, one to four. Second, the consumerization of IT, uh, advanced analytics, and virtualization. And I've got some examples of, of some, uh, some quotes and some, some interesting details about how some organizations are leveraging these. But I really want to draw your attention to that, that second column, a uh, third over from the, or two over from the graphic, uh, of the kinds of other parts of the organization who should be involved in these discussions. These are the other parts of your company who have a role to play, have a stake in these ideas ultimately. And I think all too often, unfortunately, IT leaders are either relegated to or accepting of the responsibility of simply being the custodian of the tools rather than the interpreter of the data that flows through it. Um, and it does, I'm not suggesting, of course, that you take away those responsibilities from other parts of the organization, but it does mean uh, uh, ratcheting up your game such that you are becoming the interpreter of the information and ultimately drawing conclusions uh, for the rest of the organization as to where value can be created. I think this is really exciting. The idea here is Identify some of these topics, get smart on them, uh, uh, understand what other companies in your industry, I would also recommend beyond your industry, other companies that are structured comparably to yours in the same geography have some similarities, and come to the table with some interesting insights about what they are doing. And then share a conversation with 
the heads of these kinds of divisions if these apply to your, your organization, and, to, and ask them some simple questions. What are your needs? What do you see as the potential value drawn from this? Um, what happens too often is you get orders from each of these departments that seem so different, and it means investing in three or four different systems in order to meet those needs. If you gather these kinds of executives around a table, all of a sudden you'll have a better understanding of where that, what that Venn diagram looks like, and perhaps that, that, that fat center where the, where, the, uh, um, where the crossover is will be a little bit more like an eclipse as opposed to an eight as you continue to compare this across the organization. That's, I think, a really important insight. And what's more, those business executives will be enlightened to a great degree by what they have learned from each other in terms of their demands. The conversation itself is likely to stimulate a one plus one equaling three kind of exercise um, and ultimately mean uh, investing maybe in one solution as opposed to multiple solutions. So both top line as well as bottom line implications, and at the same time, energizing a conversation that is very much focal on I, 